Hey guys, long time no see. I decided to try to get back into YouTube, upload content, and just see where we go. Today's video is going to be master level tips for flying in Battlefield. I'll be using Battlefield 2042 as a demonstration, but I'll argue that the majority of these tips can be translated well to any of the Battlefield games. Despite these being labeled as masterclass tips, I believe they can help anybody at any skill level. This is knowledge I have accumulated over the years of learning and mastering helicopters in the Battlefield franchise. So without further ado, let's get into tip one. Okay, so for the first tip, I actually decided to head into the game and just show you guys live. I reckon it'd be a lot easier to understand. It may be a bit difficult to explain, but in the most basic terms, the first tip I want to give you is zoning. Zoning is basically you are placing yourself in a position where you're always looking at them. They're never looking at you from an angle which you can't see them. And you're, when you are in this particular position, you're cutting off angles from other threats in the map. So as an example, right, we have A1 here. This is just one of the flags on Flashpoint. And typically in Battlefield games, whenever there's a flag and people spawn on the flag, they will spawn in this sort of invisible radius around it. So I know for a fact that one of the most common spawn points for A1 is actually around here. I've, like when I'm playing Heli, a lot of people tend to spawn here in these rock areas. And so judging by the way that the, the map looks here, if I get close, you've got to imagine that there's a ginormous invisible circle around this flag, which is a indication of the possible spawn somebody could go. Now, it doesn't mean that they could spawn anywhere in the circle because there's usually set locations, like that being one of them. But pretty much, if I'm playing the game, right, and I'm flying into an objective like this, and I'm, I'm actually fighting somebody here like this, okay? The problem with doing this is you're not looking and you can't see all the angles around you. So if I'm sitting here, there is so many angles that everyone else is looking at me and I can't see them. So I can't prepare for a rocket or a dodge or whatever the reason. Like, there's so many angles here and they're just looking at me from all around me. Like, I'm basically being targeted from all directions. But if I'm somewhere over here and I'm looking in the flag like this, okay? I am cutting all the angles down to one from my point of view. So from my point of view, they're all going to be looking at me and there's nothing on the sides of me and there's nothing that can be behind me here. So I'm placing myself in a position where I'm breaking down angles and viewpoints for them. Now, as an example, say that there's a vehicle over there, like, um, or a player there with a stinger, okay? An example of zoning would be, because I know that people tend to spawn here, I'll actually probably stay around in this position. I'll fly low here. Now, why here? Well, first of all, I, don't, I know they don't spawn to my left, and I know they don't spawn much to my right here. I'm cutting off the angle over there, and I know that they spawn here, so I'm relatively safe here to kill them without placing myself in a position where there's 20 different angles looking at me, or threats. Now, zoning on certain maps can be difficult. It also greatly depends on the team you're against and the situation. But another example of a zone would be, I know, for example, on B1 that people can spawn anywhere around this flag, basically. And another good area to be zoning would be somewhere like here. So in this position, I'm looking at them. See, I'm always looking at them. My cone of vision is always looking at them. Views, yeah? I don't know how much I am. Or, or at all, any actually. I actually got that. If at all. Nice. That was a good game. So for this next tip, I'm actually going to head into the game again. And this one I'll be discussing is momentum control. Now, as you progress as a pilot, you will naturally understand and get used to the way that your own movement and your momentum works of the helicopter. So you'll get better at aiming and you'll be get better at just generally moving because you'll understand how the momentum works. Now, although it will help you with your ability to move, a lot of pilots I still see, even at very high levels, don't understand how to utilize their own momentum in a way which can give them insanely good aim or insanely good movement to a certain degree. So one thing to understand about momentum control 
in this game is a lot of the time, the best way to actually approach targets is to be relatively level with them. And the reason why I say this is because the more level you are with a target, the less momentum you are using or the less momentum that you have to fight in order to control your position that you're in. So what a lot of people will tend to do if you watch a lot of pilots is they will approach a flag quite aggressively and they will attack from above. And that's, although that's fine, there's a couple of reasons why I don't necessarily recommend doing this in most situations. Number one is you're actively attacking your own forward momentum. So when you're looking down to a target, you're going to gradually begin to gain speed and get closer to them. What this does is it puts you in a very linear path and it makes it easier to shoot at and it makes it harder to shoot them because from above they actually appear smaller. So you, not only are you fighting your own momentum, you're making yourself more vulnerable and you're making them harder to hit for you. So when I say attack a target from a level ground, I mean attack a target from a position like this. Now, there are obviously ways where you can manipulate your momentum differently. Like you'll see a lot of pilots tend to circle a target like so, or they will roll around them and this allows you to control your momentum left to right. Now, there are multiple ways you can manage your momentum. You can manage it by gaining height. You can manage it by moving left and right. Pretty much creating a direction which counters another direction can easily manage momentum. Like, but the way my technique works now, this, there's nothing really wrong with doing this, but the way I like to play a heli generally is I will use my aim as much as possible and movement when absolutely necessary. And the reason why I don't necessarily recommend rolling in front of a target like this is the way anybody with a projectile will generally hit you is based on reading your momentum. Now, remember how I said about momentum control? By controlling a momentum in a way that is not predictable or not linear makes it so much harder for them to hit you. Like if you were to say, for example, I'm shooting this target and I want to remain level and I'm rolling around them like so. This puts me in a relatively predictable path. Like, even if I were to actively change directions, you're still following a relatively linear path. So, if I had to give you a situation, imagine you have an RPG, and you look in the sky, and you want to kill a heli. How do you do this? Well, you will read its momentum, and you will generally lead and predict its position based on its acceleration or its momentum. If the target is not moving much, and they're generally holding their ground, like as an example like this, okay, where they're pretty much, they're mostly grounded, but they're performing little micro movements. It is a lot harder to read a target based on very small movements than it is to read long movements. And this is proven by infantry, where if you were to attack a target that's strafing left to right really quickly, they are a lot harder to hit than somebody that is simply doing long strafes left to right. So generally... You can see how by manipulating your momentum, not only can you survive better, but you can aim way better. Like, as an example here, I'm going to kill a target. And all I'm doing here is floating and allowing my momentum to guide my aim in a direction. So I'm letting the glide of the heli assist me in a way where I'm not actually aiming as much as it may look like I am. A lot of my aim is basically using my momentum to my advantage most of the time. And you can see how a lot of times against good pilots, they will do this technique given situations. Like, for example, you may get dived by a pilot above. And what the common, most common thing I see people do is they will dive a pilot from directly above, like so. And what ends up happening is they'll have to turn back into them because they have too much momentum and they are constantly believing in the fact that I'll kill them before they can turn around anyway. But what tends to happen 90% of the time is the pilot below will just move forcing you to, again, counter so much more extra momentum and then having to rotate back into them. So when you're actually attacking a pilot, I find it to be so useful to actually be leveled with them. Because when you're attacking them from above, the only time it's generally useful is depending on how well you're managing your momentum. Say that they're like, you're above them and they're about over here. This is okay. As you can see, I'm barely gaining much speed at all. But if they're right below you, it's honestly better to remain level with them or to actively reset your momentum. So say there's a target there and I'm leaning down and I'm shooting at them. It's then doing something quick like this to actively keep resetting your momentum. You gotta be careful when chasing a target with acceleration because not like I said, it will make aiming a lot harder for you in the long run. 
Okay, so this next tip is something similar to momentum control in the sense that I feel that over time a pilot naturally learns to do these things. But even so, I still see high-level pilots not do this simply because it's too much effort or they would rather just farm easier lobbies. But in turn, learning this makes it much easier to survive and keep securing more kills to make space for your team. This one I like to call threat listing, and it is basically exactly what it sounds like. It is learning how to enter a game and place threats on a level of priority in your mind and actively adapt to or eliminate said threat. I am going to explain an example of this and then use the gameplay as a visual representation of threat listing. Sometimes in Battlefield games, in order to know your threat, you have to die to it. Even if you play so carefully and so defensively, you can never always know what the threat will be. This could be anything, an expert sniper rifle player, a great tow missile player, a jet player, etc. And the more you face these threats, the quicker you can identify them without dying to them at all. Let's say I join a lobby and I'm against a very top skilled pilot like Silk or Ash. If I know that they are on the enemy team, they are going directly to the top of my threat priority list. Because I know their ability, I know what they're capable of, and I'm aware that if any one of them get the jump on me, I have most likely lost a fight before it's even started. So my immediate adaptation would be to time their spawn and prepare for any oncoming dives or height control attempts against me. If I know I'm against a very good list player, I will play more defensively, reinforce zoning so I can make sure I'm always looking at them incoming, and attempt to shoot them down before they get to me, because of the inconsistency with desync that dodging has in 2042. Now, with really good positioning, skill, determination, teamwork, and a bit of luck, you can go against countless threats and survive flawlessly against them all. It is possible to go against multiple players and multiple vehicles focusing you if you play smart and threat assess situations. Something to be realistic about is that, no matter how good you are as a pilot, there is another factor to consider, and that is the skill level of your threats. It's one thing to go against one Silk or one Ash, but five Silks and five Ash, you're going to lose. Or five very skilled Liz players, you're probably going to lose. I hear a lot of people say in Battlefield games how incredibly overpowered vehicles are, and while in the right hands they can be devastating, one thing to understand is vehicles in Battlefield games are designed to be beaten by numbers, and by a hard counter like an anti-air vehicle. And since most games don't have five to ten skilled players all focusing one aircraft, you can generally deal a lot of impact and survive really well, but the moment you have teamwork and skill going against you, it can be nearly impossible to do anything as a heli player. You'll either be forced to play so defensive to the point where you're barely doing anything at all, or you will die before you even have the opportunity to get close. That being the nature of team games, better numbers and teamwork will win. But it does not mean you can't make it easier for yourself by breaking down your threats by priority so you can actively adapt to them. Adapting is key to survival for a Hellion battlefield. You never want to have the exact same playstyle. You always want to be actively adapting to the enemy team and your own team. That's it, mate. Look over here! 